servos first. Um, so first up, I just grabbed a servo. So you're walking into the shop, you got a buggy, truck, crawler, whatever. Um, and I get asked the questions a lot, you know, what servo should I get? Um, it's kind of a kind of a loaded question because one, we don't know what car you have, and two, what you want to spend and what you're trying to get out of the servo. So it really comes down to you knowing what the specs mean on the actual servo. This is where our little camera is going to come in handy. So I'm going to we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, so you've uh, you've walked in and you're checking out servos. So yeah, something like this. This is just a Savox. Uh, 1258, um, just a regular base middle of the road servo. I know me, Tyler, don't want to use a lot in our buggies and whatnot. Yep. Um, but you really you're looking at something like this. This is a standard 10 scale size servo, which is pretty much the most common. I didn't grab any other sizes today for the servos anyway. Um, but this is the most common size. Um, usually get handed some kind of box like this, um, you, and on the back. It usually breaks it down. I don't know how well this little camera is going to do for me today, but we're going to, we're going to play with it. Um, you got all your specs on the back here. So I'll let, uh, I'll let Tyler do some talking here while I while I take a break here. Go all right. for it. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to have a, a few specs that are on the back of the box. Um, the first one it's going to give you is torque. <clears throat> so because the servo is just an out, outlet output spline, the, the first thing you're concerned with is basically how hard is it going to twist. So it's going to give you a number, usually in ounce, inches, or what's the other one? It gives it also in metric. Usually I kg, I believe. Kilograms per uh, centimeter? I don't even know. Yeah, kilograms per centimeter. Yep. All that means is how much pressure or how much force does it exert for a, a, a predefined torque. So instead of like foot pounds, like with a car torque wrench, you're talking a much smaller thing, so it's ounce, inches, or kilogram, centimeters, whatever. It's just a measure of how hard the servo twists. So you'll see um, with a really high-end servo, um, they'll usually give that number on 6 volts of power or on 7.2 or 7.4 volts. And all that means is if you have the ability to control the, the voltage to the servo, it's going to just be a little bit more powerful on more voltage than on less. But that's that's really how strong the servo is, is what torque it outputs. Yeah, so you, it's a little, I don't know how well this camera's speaking, it's a little hard for me to see over there, but the this servo, everything's rated at 6 volts, uh, which is more or less the standard uh, voltage that a normal ESC will output. Yep. Um, some servos rated 7, 4, 8, 4, 9, 6, and that's... They don't usually go much higher than that, but you have to look at what they're rating the torque at for the voltage. Because if you buy a servo and all the ratings are at 7.4 volts, but you're just hooking it right into your receiver through a speed control outputting 6, you're actually going to be getting less torque than what the uh, the actual servo is, or what the box is telling you, basically. Um, so take a look at what the voltage is rated at. Um, I didn't grab one that had both ratings, I should have done that. But uh, it, it'll be clearly marked at the top. Th that also serves as a, a bit of a caution. If you're looking at a servo that only gives you the 6-volt torque, don't run it on 7.4 or, or a higher number. So it, you you know this, get, this gets back to what Tyler said about know what the vehicle is, know what you're putting it in, you know, and possibly know what your speed control is if it's not, you know, a ready-to-run vehicle or something like that. So you're, you're buying the servo that can accept the power the ESC is giving it, and you don't have to worry about letting right. letting out the black smoke. Yeah, so. yeah, because you will burn out the uh, you right. burn it out. Yeah, like like Olin's saying here, um, or and Tyler really. Um, if you buy a six volt servo and you end up running at seven point four, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes it'll overheat and just burn out. Um, it's kind of gambling at that point whether whether it'll work or not. But most of them, most servos are run at, at six volts. Go ahead, Tyler. You do yeah, I was, so apologies, audience. I just wanted to grab this too real quick. Yeah. So the, the other reading that they give you 
and see it's, shi all, all it's shining out a little bit. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're also going to give you a speed rating. And I think that's also dependent on the voltage because, again, you give it more juice, it's going to be a faster, more powerful servo. But that gives you a way of, of gauging how fast that servo is. Um, it's usually some amount of time for a certain amount of degrees of travel. And it's basically telling you, you know, it can move this far in this much time. So if you're putting it in, you know... In my world, a Clodbuster, a Blackfoot, whatever, doesn't really matter. You can pr pretty much slap any any uh, servo in you want. It's going to do the job fine. If you're building a 10th scale, you know, two-wheel drive mod buggy or an 8th scale, you know, uh, off-road buggy, you know, it, when you start getting into heavier stuff where you might want to be able to, you know, tweak the car in the air using the steering and, and have more control, that's where you want a little bit higher speed servo. Yeah, there's definitely different servos for different applications, and you have to kind of know, like coming into the store, what you're going to be putting it in. Yep. Um, it'll definitely help out, I mean, just from working the counter, my recommendation to what you're doing. Um, like if you're going to put a, a servo into a rock crawler, the speed, like Tyler's saying, is not going to be as important as the torque. Right. Um, but if you're putting in a two-wheel drive buggy, the torque is not going to matter as much as the speed. Um, and depending on your skill level, you may not want a really fast servo. You may yep. want a, a slower servo, um, that kind of stuff. And then also going back to the rock crawling, because it's two-wheel drive buggy and rock crawling are kind of the two extreme ends of servos, in my yeah, opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep going back to it. Olin has some experience there on the rock crawling. Um, so when you're doing the rock crawling, another thing with the servos is you may have to run like a BEC, uh, which hmm. is a battery eliminating circuit. Olin's has some... Uh, Owen's built some crawlers. He yes. knows. He knows what's going on here. A few of them. Yeah. So, basically, the that just bypasses the uh, battery and runs voltage right to the servo. Um, so, depending on what your setup is, definitely uh, take a look at the voltage and the speed. It may be more. You might need more speed. You might need more torque. Um, but other than the speed, the torque. And the voltage, there's actually just the overall dimensions. Um, Savox is pretty nice. They put it right on the box. Yep. Uh, not all companies do that. Uh, this is a normal. This is a, a normal ten scale servo, but there is some variances in the actual and the actual uh, height and yeah size yeah uh, of the servo. Um, so some applications, some servos may fit and some may not, even though they're ten scale servos. And that includes the length of the. Um the, the whip that comes from the servo. Correct. So most servos yeah. are going to have, I don't know, a 6 to 8 inch lead wire coming off of them. That's good for most purposes. In a two-wheel buggy, if you, you know, if you know that's what's going in, you might say, well, do you have one with a short lead? That way you don't have all this wire that you have to manage. If you're building a crawler where your receiver is way far away from the servo, mm -hmm. you know, maybe the servo is front mounted or something, I, I, I'm not the crawler guy, then you need to know that you want the longer lead Otherwise, you're going to have to get an extension harness and, and play that game. So, again, know the vehicle you're putting it in. Correct. Yeah. And then on top of that, uh, you did mention BECs. <coughs> you have to make sure that you're getting the correct BEC for, for your servo. Well, you have to make sure you set the voltage correctly. Correct. Yeah, because they come set pretty low. Right. Uh, the Castle one is usually what we use, and you have to set the voltage. Um, but you can set it from 5.5 five to... Seven. I don't even know. No, it goes way high. It goes higher than seven. I don't even know. Like fourteen. I've never, I never went past seven, so I always yeah. Usually seven four is yeah. what a lot of these servos are rated for. Um, and then circling back to the cord length, uh, just speaking from Savox, because we sell a lot of the Savox servos are really good stuff. Um, like a lot of the racing ones, they sell like low profile versions. of This will come with a cord that's like this long. Right. And then uh, like the black edition servos. And this one comes with a regular length cord. It's probably, uh, I can't, I'll have to do it up here, probably something like this. And then the crawler ones actually sell the waterproof versions. The black, they actually have a green case, like green paper in them. The cord's like this long. Okay. So, so they're, they're adjusting for the market that it's correct. Yeah, because you might have to run the servo from one end of the truck all to the other. But it's nothing that can be solved with a simple servo extension if you do buy one with a short cord. So honestly, don't sweat it. It's, I mean, we do, we do it all the time. Right. Um, but yeah, just make sure the servo, you got your dimensions, whether the, you know, maybe there's a height restriction, which I'm talking about the, from the spline to the bottom of the case, 
Uh, make sure you get the right speed, torque for the application, and then obviously cost plays a factor in there too. Um, there's just quite a difference between a $40 servo and a $140 servo. Yeah. Um, aluminum cases, steel titanium gears, bearings, waterproof, is a whole spectrum. But again, so I'll date my, I'm dating myself here, but if you go back to, you know, 20 years ago in the hobby, the servos that most people put in their vehicles, I mean, not race vehicles, but like your average person putting something together, they were plastic gear. Yep. They had, you know, this is rated what? Um, 166 ounce, ounce inches, which is ridiculous. Like that's a ton of torque. I think like a Futaba uh, 3003 servo was <laughs> like terrible. 40 or 50 <laughs> ounce inches. You know, yeah. they were plastic gear. They didn't have bearings in them. So, I mean, if you walk in the shop today and you say, I have a blah, blah, I need just a run-of-the-mill servo, you're getting something that 20 years ago well, would have yeah. been like a $200 king-of-the-hill servo, you know, with metal gears. And, and, like, I ran the same 1258 in my original B6 for five years. It's still in the car. It still works. Yeah, the 1258 so, is usually my go-to. That's why I just grabbed one for the video. But going to the 303... Savox makes one, I can't remember the number on it, but it's like $37, and it's metal gear, the same size as a 303, so a standard size, and it's like 130 ounces of torque. Right. And it's So it's gear. half the price of that, and it's still yeah. way superior to what used to come with like a regular pistol grip radio. Correct. That's yeah. crazy. And if you're swapping out a servo, just go metal gear. Don't yes. even bother plastic gear servos. It might have a good, you know, the torque might be okay, and the speed might be okay. But you're going to break the plastic gears if you're driving anything modern, honestly. And the well, rebuild kits are just as much Yeah, there's as no the, point. Right. Yeah, rebuilding them is pointless. Well, so. and, and most of your new race vehicles don't have servo savers in them. No. So there is, you know, you need a strong servo. Otherwise, the servo becomes the thing that pops instead right. of, you know, the, the, the wiper arm that right. bolts to the servo. Um, in reality, it's yeah. getting kind of hard to find a plastic gear servo anyway. I think Traxxas still does it in a couple ready-to-run trucks, but... Yeah, once it pops, upgrade. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but I think that about covers servos. Um, for any more questions, feel free to hit us up or message us or comment or, yeah, anything like that. Um, 